Good day everyone. Today we are going to learn more about the chapter Adaptation and Classification of Living Things. Towards the end of this chapter, the answers for the textbook back questions are also given. In the previous video, we have learnt about the meaning of adaptation. When the body parts and also the behavior of an organism changes so that they can adjust with their surrounding, it is called adaptation. We have already studied in depth about adaptation in plants and in animals. Today, we are going to focus on classification. Darwin's Theory of Evolution Charles Darwin was a biologist who studied about various types of plants and animals and he suggested two principles that came to be known as Darwin's Theory of Evolution. The first principle is survival of the fittest. He stated that it is not the strongest or the most intelligent that survives but the ones that are most responsive to the change. It is very important for an organism to change or adapt to its surrounding to survive. The second principle is natural selection. The change that healthy organisms survive is passed to the next generation. For example, look at the images on the screen. The first image is of the ancestor of a giraffe that is short-necked. Due to the surrounding situation of reaching out to eat leaves from trees, the giraffe kept stretching its neck and gradually in time the neck became longer. Now this change that helped giraffe survive was passed to the next generation. This is the principle of natural selection. Hierarchy of classification. It is difficult to study about so many living organisms. So living organisms are classified so as to make it easier to study them in depth. Various scientists came together and formed the hierarchy of classification where living organisms were classified into different groups and subgroups based on their similarities and differences. For example, if we want to specify a particular student, we say that the student is studying in Carmel of St. Joseph's School in secondary section, in standard 7th, in division A and the roll number of the particular child. This narrows down to that particular student. In the same manner, seven chief groups make up a system in scientific classification. The groups are Kingdom, Phylum, Class, Order, Family, Genus, and Species. As we go on to the next level, we narrow down to a particular organism. For example, if we look at the classification of human being, we belong to the kingdom Animalia in that phylum chordata, class mammalia, order primate, family hominidae, genus homo, species sapien. In this manner, every living organism are classified into different groups and subgroups. Binomial nomenclature. By means to Nomial means name and nomenclature means system of naming. Carl Linnaeus came up with this system of naming where every organism is given a scientific name for it to be identified easily. The first part of the name is genus of the organism while the second is species. For example, Panthera leo. Panthera is a genus of lion while Leo is its species. So 
The scientific name of a lion is Panthera leo. Let's look at another example. Human beings belong to the genus Homo and species Sapien. So according to the binomial nomenclature, the scientific name of human is Homo sapiens. In this chapter, we have learned about adaptation in plants and animals and how they are classified. Hope you have understood the chapter. Moving on to the answers of the textbook back questions of this chapter. Match the following. Lotus adapted to live in water. Aloe adapted to live in desert. Cascata horistrial roots for absorption of food. Venus flytrap flower and leaves attract insects. Who is lying? Cockroach, I have five legs. It's lying. Hen, my toes are webbed. It's lying. Cactus, my fleshy green part is a leaf. It's lying. Write a paragraph about adaptation with reference to each statement. First, there is extreme heat in deserts. Desert plants are either leafless or their leaves are like small needles or have been modified into thorns. As a result, they lose very little water by evaporation. The stem stores water and food and is therefore fleshy. The stems are green as they perform photosynthesis in the absence of the leaves. Their root penetrates deep into the soil in search of water. There is a thick layer of a waxy substance on the stems of these plants. Deserts are characterized by severe scarcity of water. Hence, desert animals have a thick skin to prevent loss of water from the body. Their legs are long with flat and cushioned soles. The nostrils are protected by folds of the skin. The eyelashes are long and thick. Rats, snakes, spiders, lizards live in deserts in burrows during the daytime and are active at night. Second, grasslands are lush green. Diverse types of bushes and grasses are found in grassland. Grasses in the equatorial region are very tall. Animals like tiger, elephants and deer can remain hidden in these grasses. However, grasses in cold regions are very short. Animals like rabbit are found in such grasses. Vast meadows are found in hilly areas as well as plains. Third, insects are found in large numbers. Insects thrive under varied conditions. They have high egg laying capacity and their development period is short. They carefully select egg laying sites and also protect their eggs. Insects also follow specific defense mechanism against enemies to increase their survival. Fourth, we have long ears. Deer and black box have long and freely moving ears that help them receive sounds from long distances and different directions. Fifth, we hide. Carnivorous animals remain hidden in tall grasses to capture their prey. Herbivorous animals hide to protect themselves from carnivores. Rats and snakes 
live in burrow during the day time to protect them from heat answer the following first why is camel called the ship of the desert camels have a thick skin to prevent loss of water from the body their legs are long with flat and cushioned soles that help them move across the desert easily the nostrils are protected by the folds of the skin and the eyelashes are long and thick to prevent dust particles from entering the nose and eyes hence camel is called the ship of the desert second how can plants like cactus and acacia live in desert with scarce water desert plants are either leafless or their leaves are like small needles or have been modified into thorns as a result they lose very little water by evaporation the stem stores water and food and is therefore fleshy the stems are green as they perform photosynthesis in the absence of leaves their root penetrates deep into the soil in search of water there is a thick layer of a waxy substance on the stems of these plants this is how the plants like cactus and acacia live in desert with scarce water third what is the interrelationship between adaptation of organism and their surrounding gradual changes occur in our body parts and also in the behavior of organisms which help them to adjust to their surroundings such changes are called adaptations differences in structure and appearance of present day animals and animals of thousands of years ago are the adaptations that occurred according to the prevailing conditions fourth how are organisms classified different scientists have used different criteria and independently classified plants and animals a hierarchy is formed in classification that starts with kingdom animalia and kingdom plantae further groups and subgroups are formed depending upon basic similarities and differences this is called the hierarchy of classification binomial nomenclature is used to identify each organisms accordingly a scientific name has been assigned to each organism it consists of two parts the first part is genus and the second species all identified organisms have been assigned a binomial name as per the guidelines of international code of nomenclature for example mango belongs to the genus magnifera and species indica human belongs to the genus homo and species sapiens fifth state the principles of darwin's theory of evolution following are the two principles of darwin's theory of evolution first survival of the fittest only those organisms are likely to survive which can best adapt themselves to a changing environment this is called the theory of survival of the fittest this is darwin's first principle second natural selection if an organism is born with a new beneficial characteristics and is able to survive this change is preserved in the next generation this is darwin's second principle and is called the theory of natural selection